welcome to my epic adventure on the western and the eastern Arthur Traverse. Um, so this was a trip I did um, back at the end of 2023 from the 19th of December through to the 27th of December. Um, took nine days in total um, and I did it from Scott's Peak um, campsite area through to Farmhouse um, Creek Trail. Um, so I took with me about 22 kilograms of everything pretty much in my pack so fairly substantially heavy pack not super heavy but like pretty up there um had eight point kg of food and one little liter of water um and yeah the weight was it was reasonable um noticeable but not overbearing as well based on my size i'm quite a quite a large dude 92 or 3 kg um so with the difficulty of the trail, so this is my post trail thoughts. Um, I really think that um, it depends on your fitness level and it depends on how long of a trip you're doing. If you're gonna do the Alpha Marine to Kappa Marine kind of trip, the standard kind of Western Arthur's trip, you know, you're probably gonna be, um, it's probably gonna be a, bit, a little bit less challenging, but it's, it's still, there's some really challenging parts in it. So. Don't think that just because you're doing a short version that it's going to be easy because it's not it's it's pretty hard um yeah i'd imagine this is the kind of trip um where we run into a lot of problems with existing injuries as well so if you do have existing injuries like this is going to be super challenging um it's a lot on your knees it's a lot on your ankles a lot on your back um, all those calves and quad muscles you're going to be used like the whole time. It's there's not it's not long hiking. There's um, there's hiking in between scrambling. It's a lot of the trip is scrambling. So um, yeah, so it's uh, a lot of helicopter rescues are on this trip. Um, I figured I learnt this kind of on the trail and after the trail because I met rangers there as well. And um, there's a lot of helicopter rescues from people that are going into this not prepared, mainly be, probably because of fitness levels, but also like the weather can change and these kinds of things. So um, yeah, if you don't have the, the, there's a few things here. The fitness is super important. Even if you're experienced and you're not fit, don't do the trail. If you're fit and you're not experienced, don't do the trail. Only do it if you've both got both of those two sort of um, areas down because either one can really mess you up on this trail, especially with things like the, the weather changing. Um, everyone's heard about it. You know, if you haven't camped in bad weather before, like, you know, there's not many places to camp here. You don't get a tent platform, are you prepared for that? You know, that kind of thing. Um, or if you don't make it to a tent platform, you might get injured. So there's lots of things to consider here. It's not a, it's not a hiking trail. Um, I, that's one big thing I've learned from this trip. Um, yeah, and having the correct gear and clothing. I, I met a lot of people on trail with very limited gear. Um, I mean, we got through with uh, a really nice weather window. Sorry, we, I mean me, but the people in who were hiking around me, we had a pretty decent weather window besides the first couple of days. So um you know got a bit lucky i was prepared up i've camped in bad weather and storms before so I'm, I'm fairly okay with it like especially here in new zealand to get similar weather um but yeah also some people didn't even have maps that were you know <laughs> you can get like it's fairly well marked but there is a lot of scrub and there's a lot of places where the trail does not um it doesn't go where you think it goes you get very disorientated easily you need a topo map you need to know where you're going you need to know what's coming up um, you need to be able to read the top of the map so just a few things just definitely consider before you do the trail um, and um, just another few considerations before we start the video here um, just be careful where you camp on the trail there is a lot of fragile alpine, um, alpine heathland which is the kind of like the um, the mossy kind of low grass area with um, small fragile plants so you know it's quite hard when you can't camp in many places and that's one of the only flat places so sometimes you do kind of have to camp some sometimes around those areas um, if the tent platforms are full but you know just be mindful if you're a small group it's probably less 
um, but if you're a large group, just aim for those 10 platforms. Um, make sure you're doing the reservation system. It's not perfect. It, it's, um, it's there to minimize impact it's not perfect obviously there are people going to be going further and or people staying behind a night it's not going to be you're not going to be just having exactly the same amount of people every day but it's there to minimize the amount of people and any one place on the trail that's a really good system so don't break it it's not that's what i'm saying don't <laughs> don't ruin the system um yeah and just accept its limitations um just, uh, yeah, the hitching on this trip. Um, a lot of people do Federation Peak, so if it's the right season, expect that Farmhouse Creek will have people doing day trips or overnight trips to Federation Peak. So I don't think it's as bad as people make it out hitching on that end. Off season, maybe a bit of a different story, but Federation Peak's pretty popular. So I actually think that end is more popular than the other end, but that was just me and my experience on the trail. Um, yeah, so just coming into the video now, it is a long video. I'm trying to show this video is in um, a kind of an exposure to the trail, is in what kind of conditions you're going to face on it, using a variety of footage. Um, so it's not meant to be a quick and easy like tour. Like this is a beautiful trail on a holiday. It's meant to show kind of all the types of things you'd be doing. So um, I, I appreciate it. it's quite long. Um, you know, you might watch it over several sections. Um, but yeah, it's meant to be a it's meant to be for people who have either done the trail and want to relive it or people who are going to start the trail and just want to kind of get a feel if is it right for them. Just have a look at some of the things I'm doing in it. You know, I'm a fit dude and it was challenging. It's a really challenging hike. Um, yeah, very exposed. A lot of up and downs. 6,700 uh, meters of elevation change. That's insane over the... 105 kilometers I think I did like that's huge it's just yeah it's only like two days of flat walking the we'll start the first day and the last day so cool let's start the video it's day one of the Arthur's Traverse I'm so excited so I'm um, been doing both the uh, western and the eastern Arthur um, ranges I'm on the Port Davy track right now. Uh, this is a track that connects um, Scott's Peak Dam just here all the way down south to the South Coast track. Give me some of that type 2 fun hiking. Gotta love a gloomy day with sprinkling rain, a bit of a wind, wet ground to hike through, mud. Brilliant. <laughs> it's everything I would dream for in a hike. No, seriously, some of these, sometimes these days are just, they're actually good fun. So from my childhood growing up, there's a funny expression when you're bushwalking or hiking in Australia, and that's bog on a log. And uh, when people refer to that, they're usually talking about wombat shit. Um, so that is wombat shit. It is very cubish. It, for some reason, they shit cubes. And they always reverse up to fucking logs. Like this is on the boardwalk here, but just, it's like, it's just classic. And just come up here, oh, more bog on a log. Lucky wombats, reverse park shitting, brilliant. So the sun's broken out for a little bit. It's kind of cool, you get to see the ranges that I'm coming into. There they are. The bumpy Arthur's range. Just catching my breath, about 740 meters. And uh, just looking out back at Lake Pedder in the distance. So Scott's Peak is that lump in the middle of the shot, in the middle of the lake. It's like a little island. And uh, just down here to the right, somewhere down there is the car park where I got dropped off. And then, yeah, walked pretty much all the way through that lowlands and sort of foothill area. It's very marshy, uh, scrubby kind of um, area with a little bit of forest in between. I feel like I'm a train. Okay, on train tracks. D 
definitely relentless. The hype is real. <laughs> yeah, mud for days. Day one, going up. Steep slopes like this. It's tough. Pretty cool. Pretty much it. At the top. Yes. Oh, how gorgeous. This feels like I'm hiking in Scotland or something. I'm just approaching above Lake Fortuna, the first of the lakes on the Traverse. So Lake Signet just below. Looks like there's a fair few people camp there tonight though. So, so I'm making my way down to Lake Fortuna after all. Uh, this might look like shit, but this is uh, my bag of goodness <laughs> I really need right now. Um, so this is pasta dehydrated um, broccoli, cauliflower, peas, corn and carrot and then I made a seasoning mix which has got um, freeze-dried beef, milk powder, cheese powder which is like a potato bake so it's like flavoured kind of cheese powder. Um, normally I put some herbs in but I don't have any herbs with me in Tassie so but yeah that's my oh and tomato paste and some Mersey Valley cheese. Fifteen. I've decided I might leave camp. It's pretty chill having um, the options of camps, short spaces. So it's only like four to six hours between most camps here. So clouds are hanging in, like the forecast said. It's been a little bit drizzly this morning. Tent's definitely still wet, but it's all good. So I'm just sort of packing up now and make my way along that ridge up the top there drop down, oh sorry I won't drop down, I'm going to be going above the Lake Signet and continue on probably to Lake Oberon will be camp. Um, the guys who camped here with me are also going there so it could be tight for space, it's a pretty, pretty popular camp spot. So. Not enough today, some scrub. Just get back up to where I left the trail. So I'm just standing on a peak. Um, just between Lake Fortuna and Lake Cygnus and uh, that's Lake T Cygnus in front of me and uh, you can see the trail there um, heading up this way here um, so up in the distance will be Square, <coughs> Square Lake and then behind that Lake Oberon which somewhere around there is where I might camp so it's not going to be a huge day but a lot of up and down still pretty rugged country and uh, just looking back so that's where I got to last night before I decided to turn back and head down this way towards Lake Fortuna down to the left and that's uh, leading up to the ridge to Alpha Marine track. So this is the camping area at Lake Cygnus you can see in the bush there's these little wooden platforms oh. I don't know if they're wooden platforms, but they're flat areas. Um, yeah, most people were perched up in those sort of two or three areas in there, that forest.
one thing I've noticed on this hike is uh, the way that you switch between the right and the left side traversing the main peaks. It's disorientating. So if you stop to take a photo or just sort of take your mind off, you know, and turn a different direction or just go off trail briefly, you kind of get back and you're like, fuck, which way was I going again? It's like a T-junction when on, in a car when you, you don't have any landmarks or anything. You're like, which way am I going? It's just, uh, it's crazy how disorientating it is. But Again. I'm camped up. I um, camped quite early. It's been a three hour day of hiking. That is fucking tiny. But this is quite technical terrain to, to um, find spots to camp. So when you find somewhere, sometimes you just got to take it. Um, the other reason I'm also camping this early is because I know that there is five people behind me with three tents and there's at least four or five tents in front of me, including a, a father and a daughter. I just passed who camped at the lake. Uh, Lake Cign Cygnus, Cygnus, um, Cignet, can't remember what it's called now, and uh, they, uh, yeah, so they said there's a few people sort of who left before them, so yeah, we're camping here tonight, um, and then I'll get to High Moor tomorrow, which is going to be a busy camp, but I think it's a little bit more spread out, and you can kind of camp anywhere, so that should be easy. So yeah, a lot of the sort of surface looks like this, this low scrub. Uh, mixed with these ice cracked rocks that are kind of everywhere So yeah, not a lot of even the flat bits. They look like this. So when you find a flat bit It's still not ideal to camp on unless you bought a shitload of foam with you <laughs> so I camped here. This is a relatively flat part um, Definitely not the widest site definitely a stretch for a tent as a two-man tent like mine, but it fits um, Square Lake is here. <laughs> you can't see it. There's a beautiful rocky bluff behind it I saw before and I, I can't wait until this cloud breaks open a bit this afternoon. So I have plenty of time to get some cool footage so, here. Now it's uh, 1.40, just chilling in my tent with the rain outside. It feels fucking lovely <laughs> to just be all in warm, dry clothes and um, raining outside when I probably could be still hiking right now. So I like this decision. Got some downtime, but that's why I always stick audio books and movies on my phone. Like 10 days, chill in your tent by yourself. You think it's really boring and lonely, but it's fucking actually just really nice to just break away. Um, and then I have no problem with those short, short hiking days. Um, I can always do a big day in between. And I, what I really want to do is see everything on this trip, like all the landscapes. It's not like this is a boring. There's no boring stretches like there is so much dramatic landscape that you want to experience it all. So I don't want to be in the clouds all the time or like trying to fast hike through rain. So I want to take my time. So yeah, it's real good. And uh, just having some lunch, some uh, classic Australian um, salami twiggy stick things. Um, they're slightly different to the ones in New Zealand. Like they're like they're slightly better here than the ones. I like these ones better. Um, spinach, tomato, and some Mersey Valley cheese. So pretty basic, just one wrap for lunch today. This is a lovely spot for a nice cup of coffee. The bird song echoes around these rock cliffs. It's really cool. I'm on top of the world. No, it's just a, on top of Mount Orion. This is my little day trip. Um, it's just a little rock scramble up from the pass. Surprisingly, it's well canned actually, like a must be a popular sort of side trip, so that was pretty cool. So, a little windy, a little chilly, so I'll put a jacket on in a second, but yeah, look at the views from up here. So, that's the rest of the Arthurs we're looking at, so that's where I'm headed. Um, it continues on past those clouds too, so that's the western Arthurs, um, and then probably right at the back where you can't see it goes into the eastern Arthurs 
But yeah, that's my destination for the next couple of days. Just down there, there's a little, two lakes. The big one you can't see very much on the left is Mount Oberon. I forget the name of the little one behind it. Um, and there's my lake that where I'm camping. It's a square lake. My tent is. Oh god, zoom. There it is. That's my tent. It's only enough for one tent down there, so I uh, forget the name of that little lake. And that's where I came from. It's a bloody long way down. How beautiful is Lake Oberon, though. It's just. This landscape is. It's funny, there's not a lot of mountain here. Like, it's these little types of peaks. You know, that's all you kind of get. But tucked away in these peaks is just so much water. Like, it's beyond anything I've ever seen. Uh, it's just beautiful. So, yeah. I'm going to head back down to my tent. Just down there at Square Lake. At least my side is sunny. <laughs> um... But uh, it was good to come up here and get some um, shots and stuff whilst the clouds are sort of tucked away. It's meant to be fairly cloudy tomorrow, I just checked the forecast up in the tops. Uh, no rain though for the next few days, which is good, just a sprinkle at best. Yeah, yeah. But the bird song is just reverbing through this whole beautiful rocky area and you can just hear it for ages. So, for dinner tonight, we have sludge. <laughs> I just love how the presentation of my home DIY meals are just fucking terrible. Breakfast. This combination is absolutely brilliant. Um, I've done this before, except I haven't used the quick oats with the granola before. Um, it's 9.10 in the morning, and I'm saying farewell to my beautiful camp here at Square Lake. And um, heading back up to the pass up here, which is uh, where I day tripped. I day tripped up to here yesterday so I've already been up this trail to the pass and then I'll do the long saddle around back in Mount Oberon, uh, sorry Lake Oberon and uh, a few other peaks before reaching High Moor and deciding if I'm going to camp there tonight so it depends on how early I get there the day after High Moor is quite rugged so that's why people camp there usually because you have to go through the beggedy bumps um, so we'll just see how much energy I feel like I have at the end and what time it is yeah, the sun's out, it's a beautiful day, the wind's died off a little bit, but yeah. Down, down, down. So just looking down the trail to Lake Oberon, this bit just here, you can see it drops off quite steeply.
Mm -hmm. Back in Dr. Zeus land. Everyone, good source of water. Possible camping, not for super flat, but. One finger hold here. Turns out you can just go this way, just super easy. <laughs> just a funny little moment where you come up along here and you get below this rock and the trail goes down here, turns into a climbing wall face over this side where that tree is and that's where I climbed up. Then we just found out you can just climb up this bit and it's pretty easy. Whoopsies! This section is since over in Lake is just Relentless up downs, all up rock roots, a lot of scrambling. Pretty cool, bit of an adventure, like an obstacle course. Coming up to a pretty notorious bit of this trip where it's just a dead end, and there's a little hole to punch through. Off time. I'm just <laughs> being a rabbit in a hole at the moment, just chucking all my crap out. Hopefully, nothing moves away too far. But yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but it's not a big hole. Not a big hole. at the section with the gap in the rock to crawl through which is up there and to the left behind where I've dumped my pipe. Just to show how small the hole is. <laughs> <laughs> we just kind of like we all met up here because this hey. is a bit of a... Oh look! Hello! <laughs> That's kind of fun. I'm doing well to find the main trail, it's for sure. I love finding the technical rock down climbing way or the up climbing way. But um, yeah, the trail looks like it comes around the back there I'm just sort of cutting in across here so poles you can go down there in the mud and we're gonna go down this rock 
love these good scrambles though. It's, it's good, challenging, fun. You definitely don't go very far in a day on this sort of terrain, that's for sure. Defeat in the right spot. from the hole section. There's this awkward sidle around under this peak on the other side to go back around to the right. It's a steep drop off. This must be Lover's Leap. I thought it was further around, but it's right here. Trees are a freaking saviour on these rocky sections, that's for sure. As annoying as they are sometimes being close proximity to the trail. They're freaking brilliant and it's like strong, strong rooted trees. Shrubs, I should say. Throwing skills, pretty fucking good. Both landed point down here. Whew. So I'm just heading down below Lover's Leap at the moment, and damn, you can see why this is called Lover's Leap. It's just a steep rock drop off, man. So behind me, I've come up from that top of that ridge there. It's pretty, been pretty steep coming down. And then Lake Uranus, just down there. And um, that's where the trail goes, somewhere down there. And just look how big this cliff is. Just a huge cliff all above me. It's massive, I can't fit it in the can't fit in the shot, it's just too big. Just heading under Lover's Leap, the big rock cliff above me. Yep, if that falls, squish. Never a dull moment in this day of walking, that's for sure. <laughs> it's such a meandery passage through the the peaks and the cliffs and the lakes. Yeah, you come down here, there's the Lover's Leap Rock, and then down here, pretty gnarly. I'm just having a breather in the saddle between Mount Capricorn, and I forget the name of the peak, I don't know if it's named, no, the one straight ahead. So just over there, sorry, I'm burping, uh, just over the other side of that ridge is Lake Oberon, so... You can see how technical the terrain is just to make a path through it. I mean, you can't really go over the tops at all. It's too, it's too just craggy, really. Um, so they've, they've picked out a trail that kind of just goes through these sharp rock protrusions. And uh, so up here is Lover's Leap, that big rock that I sort of went under. Yeah, so you kind of go 
Yeah, you gotta go down, then up, then down, then up, then down, then up, then down, then up. That's that's I'm trying to recall, like I'm looking at the it's kind of about how many up and downs there are in that little traverse. So this guy behind me on the top of the ridge. It's so funny hearing the noises that people make when they're struggling going up a hill, like he's going pretty slow. And uh, it's just grunting so hard, it's just fucking hilarious. Like, I know what it's like, I've been in that position. But... Just had lunch with these guys. It's the group of five on the first night I camped with. And uh, we're all heading to the same place. So. back of Mount Capricorn now. Bit of a descent to start. I'm working out which way to actually go down. Let's try this way. It's all trial and error on this track. Uh, hanging off rocks. That's what today's all about. Yeah, need a better grip than that. lakes it's so cool so we've got lake ariel lake miranda and lake titanus i've caught up well not quite yet but about an hour behind the group of six or so in front of me just down there in the pass so i'll probably overtake them at some point it's much quicker when you're hiking by yourself so on the back of mount capricorn this is the rock bivy you could fit two people probably comfortably in here. It's definitely protected from the um, weather, so definitely good for rain and stuff. I wouldn't say it's flat. And water, I mean, you, there's a trickle coming down here. You could find some water, I think, to trickle into a container somewhere. Good times. All right, poles, long distance for you guys. Beautiful. Beautiful. This part here reminds me very much of West Coast New Zealand hiking up a spur to get to the ridge. Are you just climbing through scrub? And it's just pretty much pulling up the scrub with your hands. So, thank you. Just some context of what I just came down. That's it. <laughs> just the side of a rock, basically. A lake to add to the day. Lake Dion, tucked away by itself down this side. Oh shit, this is much farther. It's like fucking cruisy hiking now. Uh, 
one high more now. Just heading to the top section. So I'm on the summit of Mount Columba on High Moor. Originally came up this way to find a campsite. I had maybe a bit of water nearby, but the closest I got with a couple of drips and tiny, tiny puddles. So I think I will be making my way down towards the main campsite, which is just straight ahead. I haven't done enough climbing today. I just climbed the little peak next to my campsite. I'd say like 70 meters up, to be honest. Not even that, 50 meters maybe. And uh, it's a really fucking cool view up here. So there's Lake Dion. It's that one I sidled past when I came down uh, this... Uh, where the fuck did we come? Yeah, it's just, I think down this grassy slope you could see it. Um, so Lake Dion there. That also runs into Lake Saturn. The big one down there. Um, then... This is just a drop off. Just want to perspective. There's the trail going ahead up there. And Lake Ganymede down there. And Columba in the background. And my wall camp. So my tent is on a sort of a higher ledge. It looks like it's really close to the other guys, but it's not. Um, yeah, they're all on like the wooden platforms. So, yeah, now the five guys are just getting water now in the middle. There's a little like little platform going out to the pool of water. It's very limited water here. So, just showing you one of my DIY really easy um, meal, especially if you don't have water. Um, like, you know, you need to clean something or just an excess of water use so these are just I just cook in my Ziploc bag um, all it is is mashed potato with a pack of soup mix so I usually get the gourmet flavor ones I can't remember what this flavor is though and then I've just thrown in a lot of dehydrated other things so I've got dehydrated peas corn and carrots and also broccoli and cauliflower and then there's chicken so there's rectangular lumpy things of chicken. This is super tasty and um, there's quite a lot of carb in that and it just takes mm, probably 500 ml of water um, and that along with a cup of tea, I have an Earl Grey tea, a little bit of rum and um, I'll be set. Yeah. I just find it cool the little forest of little I don't know, alpine kind of plants and flowers and mosses. Just everywhere. These little sundews, the mosses are flowering. So it's about 8.50, this fine morning here, with only a bit of a breeze going on. And uh, just one of the major benefits of camping here in the Arthurs, just being the only really big prominent sort of range um, within a few kilometers, is that you get some nice morning sun. Um, you, you know, every night you pretty much camp in high up, you're gonna get um, a lot of air moisture settling on your tent and obviously when you breathe on the inside and just being able to air it out and almost dry, like pretty much gonna pack this way nearly completely dry. It's a pretty damn cool bonus. Day, uh, what is it? One, two, three, day four. Day four of my adventure. And 
just setting out today from 9.15. Beautiful spot I can't. Just leaving High Moor and uh, heading across to the last section of the Western Arthurs. Um, so a lot of the guys that I met today, or yesterday I should say, well I met them before but yesterday was where I sort of bumped into most of the groups. Well, last night we were talking a lot but um, everyone's heading out Kappa Moraine which is the usual shorter loop. Yep, straight into it. Straight into it. I think this uh, this traverse needs a new name, and that name is the Knee Buster. Tell you what, that'll reduce some people coming down. Cause tell you what, like I'm fit, and I've got a my pack's like decent weight, but it's not um. I wouldn't say it's too bad. I've definitely done way worse than this with weight. You can definitely feel your knees. So, yeah, knee buster, the knee buster traverse. Yeah, yeah damn, you want to be comfortable on rocks on this hike, man. It's um a lot of a lot of climbing, a lot of scrambling. A lot of slippery rocks as well. Okay, so first peak of the day, uh, looking behind at Tilted Chasm, um, just down here, and uh, that's my next little spot I'm going. And uh, just looking back at where I camped, so behind this rocky outcrop is where I camped, and then the main campsites uh, down the back of those like trees behind the rock down there and high moor. Now that's a section where you just go, holy fucking shit. That's fucking steep down there. Holy crap, man. Well, here we go. One of these rocks gave. It'd be an interesting tumble, that's for sure. It's all bedrock, but you never know. One day someone's gonna loosen it up. Good way to fucking ride off the next part of your hike. Uh, yeah. Definitely recommend some arm strength on this trip. Hanging off rocks is a lot of the story from each peak to peak. Good climbing or scrambling skills, definitely. This is not for the faint-hearted. Oh yeah. Ooh, came out of a, another steep descent under the tilted rocks. So this is like Tilted Chasm 2.0. A bit longer. Not as steep, but yeah. Five is just at the top, about to start the descent into Tilted Chasm, which is oh, if we go behind this rock up the back here, and uh, you can see just how freaking steep it is. <laughs> it's it's pretty insane how they've connected this map. Looking towards the beggary bumps, these little guys just in front of me. So it doesn't look very prominent, but you can just see already that there is some weaving between these rocky outcrops. Getting down to the beggary bumps is pretty wild. 
just kind of it's just on this little rock over here going up around to come down here like a little u-turn oh shit another time i have to say thanks thanks tree for being here because i don't know how else to get off that rock oh you definitely feel your knees after every maneuver in some of these tight situations ah oh, bit of a log hug there's not a lot to put your feet on Not a new lake, it's Lake Ganymede, just from the other side. It just looks new because it looks like I'm coming around a different ridge, but I'm not. Again, the location and wayfinding on this trip just makes um, orientation just so deceptive. Like it's just, you, you're just not sure which way you're looking unless you look really into the distance and find something like Lake Pedder or Federation Peak. out up into the tops of the bigger bumps looks like a little bit more open terrain a little bit less less steep downhills for a little bit More monkey time. Monkey time. Thank fuck for long legs. So, just around a thousand meters, approaching the final summit at the end of the Big Rebounce Range. So just looking back from one of the higher points just past the Big Rebounce. So we're coming down the Tilted Chasm just here and slightly across down uh, this little chasm and then jumping up to the ridge here. We've got Lake Jupiter down here. Lake Haven straight ahead, which is where I'm headed. I'm gonna go for a swim and a lunch there. Oh, that's where I'm going. Somewhere down there. Try to be easiest way. I'll get down. Get 
about the 50th time I've thrown my poles today. Matt Lake Haven. Just trying to find a nice spot, a little bit closer to the water edge. Go for a swim. That's a little bit gross after four days of hiking without a swim. In the lake outlet now. Go around to this side. Lake meets the trail. <clears throat> There's a little dell in here. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh, it's good, but it's so cold. Here is a refreshed man. Fucking beautiful. Really nice. After four days of just... <laughs> he just starts thinking like fucking meatball sandwiches eventually. And now just leaving Haven Lake. Good long hour break. Down there. Bit of a swim. Feel refreshed. Lunch and some coffee. Had a chat with the the three down there for a bit, and then ah, oh, so cool. Just every angle of this place. It's so picturesque, so expansive, and so rugged. This is, uh, one of the coolest views so far for me. Something about the depth of the perspective. But yeah, so you've got this, you go over this peak, um, around the back of these ones, there's another little lake called Lake Serona. And then I'm going behind here, there's three lakes down there, which is where I'll camp tonight. And this is Lake Mars, down the bottom. It's just so far away, and so, so far down, like it, doesn't look like much in video footage, but um, that's a long way down. And uh, way off in the distance, you got the Eastern Arthurs over here, Federation Peak here. That's where I'll be going. Oh, that would be a, one of the parts where not having a pack would be kind of handy. So you, you can learn why they do these rock paths to protect this fragile pillow, uh, kind of alpine, it's not marsh, but I don't know what to call it. It's about 4.30 p.m. and uh, I'm heading down the section of trail that um, breaks apart the Western Arthur's shortened version by the Capra Marine and on to the, the west of the rest of the Arthur's um, which leads me into the eastern soon as well so uh, down here is the Capra Marine so that's where most people would finish the trip and then I'm going further along so across these lakes I'm going to camp at probably that higher lake 
um, unless there's something really magical down at this is Lake Juno at the bottom and to the right you can't see it yet is Lake Vesta. So the trail follows a little creek for a little bit heading down to Lake Vesta kind of pop into it and pop out of it ah oh, man Never get sick of lake views, it's so good. So just passing above Lake Juno now. Oh, fuck, my shoes get a wash. <laughs> so, in the outlet of Lake Juno. That trail is so overgrown. This is kind of nice and refreshing. It's beautiful. This is the trail. <laughs> it's so overgrown. It's quite slow to get through. It's basically space for your legs and that's it. That's <sighs> oh, beautiful in here. Oh, this crazy guy. Fresh water here. I feel like a bit of a bee, like cross-pollinating all the flowers. I reckon I've encouraged a lot of reproduction this trip, so, you know, count as my erosion. section of the Western Arthurs is pretty gnarly. It's a different kind of gnarly to the stuff I've been doing on recent days. That one's just more like the endurance of going up and down all the time kind of like lots of rock scrambling and monkeying around roots and branches but this one's all about the scrub and the mud there's a lot of it so this is the first break i've had coming around promontory lake and uh yeah i'm glad i pushed on just to get past a kind of a slog section so i'm gonna try and find somewhere up on this hill to camp I think. So I'm all camped up here at Lake Promontory and um, yeah today was a pretty tough day another fairly tough up and down grunty kind of day um, yeah the start of the day was harder um, and this last sort of hour and a half ish just coming off the main trail um, so yeah the Start of the day had the tilted chasm sort of drops into the beggedy bumps. Nothing super hard, but just um, yeah, pretty grunty kind of stuff. And then um, the part after Haven Lake, once you got over those ridges past it, it was super easy, all the way down to Kappa Moraine. Um, and then, yeah, just got like the growth was just insane, and then the mud again. So, yeah, um, so 10k is all up. So, not, not a lot of mileage for a, what was a nine day, nine, eight hours of hiking, yeah, with a one hour break at the lake for a swim. So, this is so, sludge number two style dinner. Look at that beautiful sludge.
five and uh, about to set off from Promontory Lake and head up um, on the last stretches of the Western Arthurs. And um, so yeah, the weather today is, it's been, it looks gloomy, but it's, <laughs> this has been a really nice evening and morning of no wind. Um, this is the first non-windy day I've pretty much had in Tasmania. So it is windy, it's just not windy here because I'm on the northern side, uh, northeast kind of side of the ranges. So it's quite protected, even though it's quite open and flat with this beautiful lake and these mountains behind it really protecting me. So that's cool. Uh, I'm sure I'll hit the wind when I get up in the tops again, but... section of yeah. the Western Arthurs is pretty gnarly. It's a different kind of gnarly to the stuff I've been doing on recent days. That one's just more like the endurance of going up and down all the time. Kind of like lots of rock scrambling and monkeying around roots and branches. But this one's all about the scrub and the mud. There's a lot of it. So this is the first break I've had coming around Promontory Lake. And uh, yeah, I'm glad I pushed on just to get past a kind of a slog section. So I'm gonna try and find somewhere up on this hill to camp, I think. Navigation on this part behind the lake. The trail is very, very small. I've lost it a few times. And yeah, just have to keep backtracking towards it. But I'm on it now. So that's where I camped last night on that little plateau there on uh, Promontory Lake. And I came from down the back of this mountain where uh, behind it is Lake Vesta and Lake Juno. And then behind this little pass down here would be Lake Haven. So the track goes behind this range. Lake Venus is just below me. Well, the end of Lake Venus, it's much larger. And um, this is the ridge line I have to follow now. So going along here. Broke out of the scrub. Uh, wasn't, what isn't as bad as the scrub at the lake level, but um, hard to find the track. And so I'm at the saddle before the uphill climb. So now it's much easier ground. So that's good. Been trying to remember the name of this plant. Um, someone told me it of Scarapada, something like that. But it's pretty spiky and it's pretty woody. Yeah, it's definitely one of like Tasmania's worst, that's for sure. Um, reminds me a little bit of Madagari in New Zealand, that level of annoyance. Well, it's Lake Mercury. So straight off to Venus, we got Mercury. That's pretty cool. What's next, Lake Sun? <laughs> ah, some of these movements are hard with packs, definitely. Oh. peak up here is West Portal. So I might just do a little side trip up there, have a quick looky. And then I come over the crags of Andromeda, which is um, this sort of ridge line here. So this kind of zigzags the ridge line from where I am now. I go behind this little lump in front of me and zigzag down the crags of Andromeda. And then from there, I'll reach Lake Rosemary, uh, Rosemary, Roseanne. Good about it kilometer worth of this kind of scrub over the next sort of pass before getting to West Portal. So yeah, definitely harder and slower work getting through the scrub.
Well then let's climb up to West Portal. Uh, uh, uh. So I'm pretty much at the base of West Portal. So I'm gonna have some lunch. I'm gonna head up there, or maybe I'll do it in reverse. I'll go up there and have some lunch. Deep hack. Oh boy. I'm glad I had poles and that up climb because, fuck. That's, uh, that's a lot of climbing. It's pretty surreal up here. Almost to the summit, West Portal. Yeah. <sighs> yep, I think I'll pass on that last little bit. Little notch. Yeah, if you stick lower, you'll be able to come up this way a bit easier. Get to the summit up the top there. All right, I'm at the top of, near the top of uh, West Portal. Uh, just a little side trip before I have some lunch. Uh, down on the start of the crags of Andromeda below me. Uh, it's just beautiful. This is just endless rolling hill country for just kilometers so every direction you look it's just endless it's so cool so that's the true top of west portal just straight ahead you can see a little rock can at the top now heading along the crags of andromeda so change of direction and uh at the end of all of this will be my first good water source besides like puddle water like this which would be Lake Roseanne get a refill there Pretty crazy folded rock formations here on the Crags of Andromeda, especially this part here behind me that you can see in the background. That is a sharp angle of a folded rock. Like just imagine the pressure to make rock do that. And then uh, all these guys up here, lots of layered strata for yeah this last section. I'm heading off the and, um, Andromeda Crags and I'm doing a sidle around this uh, scrub area sort of under the the furthest rock formation on the crags and uh, not too far away from Lokeroy's hand so it's a couple of K away I think from memory and um, it's about two 15 p.m. so I've made real good time today can't it'd be lying to say that I've got a lot of energy like it's definitely been hard and I can feel my knees been a hard few days like today's been a bigger day than most of the other ones but um uh. The scrub, intimate scrub time. Ugh. Ugh. Yep, this is trail. This is like the easiest way to get to the scrub. Let's just get your arms high. I'm trying to be like narrow. I'm in the scrub. 
like under it. It's near the end though, so I think. Oh god. It's just endless plant. Whoa. Yeah, not easy. Oh I'm finally out of that section. So the section just before Lake Roseanne is freaking hell. Uh, it's just like a scrub attacking you. Um, this is my arm, blood. Uh, yeah, lots of scratches. Um, that's Lake Roseanne down there. And uh, Lucifer Ridge over there. And the Eastern Arthur's over there. It's quite pretty. So I'm camped up here at Pass Creek. So I'm on the start of the, uh, before the ascent of the Eastern Arthur's Traverse now. So the Western was finished today, the Eastern starts tomorrow. Um, this is by far the weirdest camp, I've, well, the weirdest spot I've ever, ever put up a tent. Um, yeah, look at this. It feels like I'm on a landing platform and I got my little space shuttle. I'm gonna fucking orbit into space. And I just realized that that is West Portal, that big feature in the middle. That's the peak I was pretty much on the top of earlier today just before lunch. Just chilling out with breakfast and coffee on my <coughs> space launch platform. You go check out this toilet. It's even got its own privacy. But yeah, such a simple design twist top. Do your thing, platform, helicopter can t pick it up and take it away. Trying to maybe have a shortage day to goon more just after the big day yesterday so I should get there quite early yeah they've really put a lot of work into restoring some of the track work here to prevent a bit of disease spread and erosion so on one hand it might be kind of annoying how it's there like in terms of feeling in the middle of uh, backcountry sort of hiking in the middle of nowhere but it's super Super cool, that is here. Um, about to start the ascent up into the Eastern Arthurs. So straight ahead you can see you follow this ridge line all the way up to the tops. So it's a pretty much gradual 1000 meter ascent up. Disengage, luxury hiker mode. Engage, challenging hiker mode. Hooah, let's go. God, I've gone for like 50 meters, I'm already fucked. Oh boy. <clears throat> There's a lot of elevation gain and loss on this trip, so your body definitely feels it. 950 meters more to go. Too easy. You know the stairs in Lord of the Rings at Kiriathungol where Gollum takes Sam and Frodo out before the spider's lair. 
that's what it feels like I'm going up. This is my first snake encounter on the trail. Just up there in the bushes. And Arthur's up here and at this ridge to get the high tops there. And I think that peak is called the boiler plates. West Portal and the Crags of Andromeda and uh, over here is that giant bluff that you kind of go down the forest uh, the scrub just along the base of it. The sun's beating down hot. That's now endless scrub bashing uphill. Definitely a hard section. Oh. This section's tough. Whew. Get a couple of minutes reprieve from scrub bashing, which is super nice. Oh, it's really beautiful. Uh, uh, Steep part is now before me. So I think I've worked out how Parks Tasmania, who does the trails here, I think I've worked out their strategy. Wherever it's marsh, protect it, put in boardwalks and rocks. Whenever there's a disease, put in the raised platforms. Okay, well it also prevents erosion. Wherever there's scrub, fucking just leave it. Let people deal with the scrub. <laughs> Because the trail is pretty damn good, except when you get to a scrubby area. Lake Leo, first lake I've seen on the Eastern Arthur so far. Pretty cool because I'm a Leo, so I resonate with this lake already. Five minutes of seeing Lake Leo you go up over the ridge and on the other side and then Lake Ron Smith. The spinach is still holding on strong. Starting to transition from salami sticks into jerky and from tomatoes into sun-dried tomatoes. <laughs> so that's my destination ahead. So heading off Stuart Saddle below the cliffs to Goonmore and you can just see a transition a lot more water after this and these cliffs I'm getting more into the wet vegetation back in Dr. Zeus land so just just below Stewart's saddle just where I had lunch. It's a beautiful little platform campsite with a water source with all the cool like mosses and palms and feels like you're in Gondwana. Huge cliffs in the background. This would be an awesome place to camp. So beautiful in here. It's so different. Really? Oh, it's so good. It's now 
traversing around the other side of the ridge along the top. So a bit of a down climb from Stewart's Saddle under the big bluff through the rainforest and then sort of up again onto this ridge. And yeah, it's gonna get around the back of this ridge and then a bit down and up again into Goonmore. Just approaching Goonmore now, the last few little peaks around the ridgeline, just have to traverse around. How's that for a view? This is looking back towards Stuart Saddle, which is up here. That's where I had lunch um, earlier today. When was that about? Uh, two hours ago at 12.30 I had lunch up there, it's 2.30 now. So I've had to come down here behind this rock, down the bottom here, and then you come up over this side here, over the back, around this side. So it looks like you're really close to Goonmore when you're at Stewart's Channel, but it's actually really far away. Apparently the actual Goonmore site's closed and this is uh, where you camp, so this is prior to getting onto Goonmore. But check out how cool this is. So you got water here, it's piped in from must be a little bit of a trickle runoff that goes into it. And then you got four platforms. One, two, three, and four. It's like little tree houses almost. It's friggin' sweet. Just take a look out next to camp. So camp is literally just in here somehow. I don't know how they managed to put a camp there, but that's pretty cool. And we got the beautiful cliffs I passed earlier. We've got Lake Shore down the bottom. And just about here, Generation Peak. Looking into the clouds. It's my Christmas dinner and drink and dessert. It's a beautiful landscape. It's just so endless and eerie. been an awesome campsite the wind has been pummeling from the other side and um, not a not even a whiff of it hitting here this has been brilliant so last night super nice camping and uh, yeah it looks pretty windy out there today but absolutely spotless with clouds so today I'm aiming to get to Hanging Lake bit of a climb up it's both warm and windy as expected just looking back at where I just came from, so good moors over the other side of those that hill kind of in the distance. And uh, Lake Krakow is just down there. And 
just heading over the tops to Four Peaks now. I'm at Four Peaks now, or well, just about to get down to them. So I'm assuming it's one, two, three, four. So I'm just over the other side of the first of four peaks. So you never actually go up it. You're just going around it. Oh, back to this again. Oh. Yep. Pull the way. It's freaking surreal, this landscape, man. So, freaking awesome. so we're looking at Federation Peak off in the distance here. Just being a monkey again. Monkeying around. Whoa. Woo! So a tricky little maneuver here. Gotta get up this somehow. So I'm just making it up as I go with this fucking rock in my face. <sighs> Almost. Just need to be able to get that left hand up. Not quite. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Ooh. Most useful area of poles, that's for sure. Oh boy, that section was pretty damn tough. The four, pe uh, four peaks. That's definitely one of the hardest bits of the trip so far. You go pretty much around the back of the whole thing, not over the tops at all, which definitely would have been harder. But um, yeah, there's a lot of steep um, rock scrambles in that section, and a lot of scrub. So. Oh, so nice after scrub. That's the good thing. This hike is extremely easy moments, and extremely hard moments. So it's good to have them in between. It mixes it up a lot. So I just ditched a load of my crap out of my bag. Let's go summit Federation Peak. So I'm on the summit Federation Peak. Fuck yes. What an adventure. What an adventure. Just um, celebrating my Christmas here on Federation Peak in Tassie. Uh, I've got my Christmas. Fruit mince pies, I always need my shitty fucking, you know, biscuits or cake, whatever. So I've got that, I'm happy. And a little bit of um, rum there just to celebrate, so. I just realized these are vegan friendly fruit mince pies. The crust is like eating an, an anthill. This is the I peak tops itself. And the way up was from down there. That's Lake Geeves. Um, over up in the distance there is Hanging Lake, and that's where I'll be camping tonight. And Geeves Peak is the the bit on the left. Um, you can see the ocean out this way. Okay, this is a really fucking steep drop off. That is lots of hundreds of meters down. Look how f every time I look at it, I get vertigo. It's just like I can't even lean over that edge. Oh, I mean, you can get closer to that edge, but it's like you still can't see how steep it is because it drops off under you. But yeah, it's a it's just a, a straight drop down there. Um, so this little ridge is how you get onto Federation Peak from the west. 
again hanging leg down here so I've come from over this saddle and over behind the four peaks which are those little lumps out in the middle there. And I'm assuming this peak at the back is West Portal which is um, on the Western Arthurs so yeah so I've come all along this ridge line too at the back so it's pretty crazy it's just so open that you can just see as far as you've come like dropping down from Federation Peak so it's the start of the descent just into this little gut here It's just breathtaking. Like when you're coming up, you don't just, you're not looking at all this stuff, but. God damn! Out a bit of the trip. Um, very exposed section. That's, uh, that's a sheer cliff. That's a sheer cliff. So, <laughs> yep. I just. Making sure I've always got those hands on something here. <sighs> yeah, somehow this near vertical wall of rock just seems to have a few ways to get up. This just happens to be the easiest. I just got to really pluck out those good grips and just ride them, ride them with all your grip. The quartz here is quite nifty. And just one of the more exposed sections of the uh, Federation Peak is got to kind of sl slide along, along, uh, along this way and then climb up. Um, and from here, you kind of come down like this. So, so yeah, that's the climb up, or the start of it anyway. What a day. I really want to go for a swim. Not particularly right now. I don't want to die when I hit the water, but like I actually just want to go for a swim. Who needs a gym? And you can practice being a monkey. So I'm back on the trail now. Heading up that way, back towards Hanging Lake, where I've left all my stuff at the trail, turn off. So heading to Hanging Lake, it looks freaking cool, the lake is literally just on that hilltop and the camp is just on the left. So. Hanging lake. It's a fucking cold lake, but I'm going for a swim, even though it's not sunny. Because I feel gross. Alright, let's find this deep bit. Oh god, it's so cold. It's so cold. It's so 
good. Oh. Just sort of hanging around up here for sunset, reminiscing my last week of hiking because it's been exactly one week today since I started heading back towards Federation Peak um, where I went yesterday. This time not going up the peak though, just continue on past the Eastern Arthurs track down Moss Ridge then into the Crackhoft sort of catchment area and that's where we'll camp at the south branch the Crackhoft River. Day eight on trail. Um, yeah, second last day, and uh, I can tell you now, with the amount of elevation gain and loss, which I'll work out at the end, I'm going to have some damn quads of steel. <laughs> like they're just going to be rock hard. Probably be able to break open a safe with them. So dramatic. And um, yeah, we've got Federation Peak. And just like this drop off down here. Like look down to the lake just here and just how different it is to there. That elevation is dramatic for the amount of distance that is. It's just a straight cliff down. Stone Gully, it's just here you come down and you have to go up here. I missed that marker and I continued down the gully. What an idiot. Quite amusing, just past a girl, uh, just doing a, a day, or I guess a like day, day run, a tra trial runner I guess, but I'm um, going to climb Federation Peak and go back out in the day, just covered in mud, like face to, like, it's just, I know what's coming up. <laughs> Super tight, like some of that earlier stuff I did at the end of the Western Arthur, so it's nice. And it's not as spiky. Moss Ridge is a beast. Doesn't look like much on the map. Fucking hell, it's tough. I'm going down, it's tough. So, just a lot of drop offs like this, up and down, lots of roots, mud. It's a lot of a steep section. I need to go right down there, how far down that is. You can see just how gnarly this ridge line is. It is probably one of the hardest bits of this whole trip. Boy, this tr moss ridge is kicking the shit out of me. Fuck, this is hard. This is the hardest part of the entire eight days so far. This fucking ridge. It's just nature kicking your ass. It's um, 
still a lot of up and downs, which has been the whole trip. Lots of roots, which has been everywhere, but not as long as this. Just the kind of state of the trail. I just had lunch at Cutting Creek, which is a little campsite at the base of Moss uh, Ridge. Super cute little area. Um, nice fresh water. Feel a little bit more energized. Roots. The roots in the mud. Quite nice listening to running water beside me on this trip. It's not been a lot of running water at all in the eight days that I've done. It's always been drips or lakes. But yeah, look at that golden red, uh, golden crimson almost. It's surreal. Water's this colour. Oh, it's so delightful. I'm just standing in the water. I'm just smashing this, oh, gulping it. I drank probably three liters. It's just that hot today. Um, I'm just throwing this beautiful, cool water over your head on a hot day. I love this color, man. So, just dropping into a little creek gully. Looking out over the open plains before the Krakoft South River Branch. So I just left Krakow South River camp, the temporary platform camp, because the main side was ruined by the 2018-19 bushfires. Yeah, nothing special to say about that camp. It's there more practicality, not for its beauty. Um, yeah, but there's not a lot you can see what I'm hiking through now. This is this is it. It's mud. It's scrub grasses and tree fall. Nice easy little part of the trail. Shorter plants. Also the worst thing about being the first hiker in the morning is the spider webs. It's so hot today. The last two days have just been totally different temperature to the rest of the trip. Really really warm conditions. Um, but the night last night was surprisingly the coldest night on the whole track at the lowest elevation, so that's pretty crazy. The cold air must have really settled in the valley. Free flowing though compared to the rest of the trail. So should be able to smash out these last um, kilometers. Just 
just at the trailhead of Farmhouse Creek. Um, that's the creek down there across the trail. And the trail starts here. So now I've got a 7k road walk to the car park. Just a kind of an angry looking tiger snake on the trail. <laughs> Look at him. So we had to do a side bush bash around to get past Mr. Angry Snake over here who's really getting a bit aggressive, standing his ground, not moving.